Hello, this is Mr. Savage. Let's get started with some uh, information about circles in Chapter 8. This is the only time in uh, our curriculum that circles are really taught, so it's important that you get some of the basics of circles down and learn to find both circumference in Lesson 1 and area in Lesson 2. Uh, let's get started with the vocabulary startup on page 613 in your math book. Please follow along. A circle is the set of all points in a plane that are the same distance from a point called the center. The circumference is the distance around a circle. The diameter is the distance across a circle through its center. The radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. Fill in each box with one of the following terms, center, diameter, and radius. So the center is the point in the middle of the circle and it actually is the basis of the circle because if you don't have a center, then you can't have all of the points that make the circle. So let's fill in the box that's pointing to the center. Okay, let's move on. Now, they said in the paragraph that the diameter is the distance all the way across the circle through the center. So the line that goes all the way across the circle is the diameter. So let's fill in diameter here. And then they also said that the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. So the line that starts in the center and goes to the edge of the circle would be called a radius. All right, so those are important words to know as we go through these lessons about circles because we will be needing to know the diameter to find the uh, circumference and we'll definitely need the radius when we find the area in lesson two. So let's get started here making some comparisons. Real world length. The table shows the approximate measurements of two sizes of hula hoops. Hula hoops were very popular back in the day when they were introduced in the 50s. It was a toy that everyone wanted. It was a pretty big pastime for people to have hula hoop contests to see who could keep the hoop uh, going around their, their hips for the longest time. Uh, it was good exercise fun and people enjoyed it a lot. But let's talk about child and adult hula hoops. So child hula hoop had a radius of 14, a diameter of 28, a circumference of 88. Adults would be larger hula hoops. So radius was 20, diameter was 40, and circumference was 126. So A says describe the relationship between the diameter and radius of each hula hoop. Well, diameter appears to be twice as much as the radius because 14 times 2 would be 28 and 20 times 2 would be 40. So the relationship is that the diameter is 2 times the radius, or you could say, you could say that in a formula, you could say D equals two times R, D equals two R. All right, B, describe the relationship between the circumference and the diameter of each hula hoop. So now they want us to think about those two numbers. So to see what the relationship is between the two numbers, we would probably do like we did in the first chapter unit rate. We would divide the circumference by the diameter or 88 divided by 28. So 88 divided by 28, if you have a calculator hand, handy, comes out to be about 3.14, okay? And then if we look at the second row, the relationship between the circumference and the diameter there, 126 divided by 40, actually works out to be just a little bit different, but around 3.15.
So what we just found out was that there is some kind of relationship there that is around the number 3.14. And we actually have a, a name for the number that describes the relationship. The name of the number is pi, and we spell that P-I, not P-I-E. It's a Greek letter from the Greek alphabet, but pi stands for how many diameters it takes to make a circumference of a circle. Now, 3.14 is not exactly the correct number because pi happens to be a, an unusual, irrational number because you can't write it exactly as a fraction or decimal. It does not repeat and it does not end. So it's not possible to write a number that correctly represents exactly what pi is. But we're gonna describe the relationship here that a diameter multiplied by about 3.14 equals a circumference. Okay, so now that we kind of understand that circumference is going to be the diameter times about 3.14, then that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So we're ready to move on to page 614. Page 614, going, they're going to remind us here how to find the radius and diameter. Uh, remember we said that it takes two radiuses to make a diameter. You could also say, conversely, that if you want to find the radius, you have to divide the diameter by two. Let's go through a couple of examples here to make sure we understand that. So in number one, you see the picture of the circle. They have given us the diameter. It goes all the way across. The diameter is 14. If we wanted to find the radius, we would take the diameter of 14 and divide that by two, and that would give us the radius, which is seven. All right, now in example two, they gave us the radius. It only goes halfway across. The radius is eight. If we wanna find the diameter, we would need to take two times the radius. So two times eight would give us 16. So 16 feet would be the diameter. Okay, you try this now. Find the radius or diameter of each circle with the given dimension. So if they tell you the diameter, you're going to uh, show how you would find the radius. If they tell you the radius, you're gonna show how you would find the diameter, okay? Stop the video at this point and you do A, B, C, and D, and then we'll go over those together. Okay, hopefully after stopping the video here, you're ready to go over the problems with me. So in problem A, if they gave us the diameter of 23, and we wanted to find the radius, we would need to divide 23 by two. So 23 divided by two is 11.5 centimeters. Let's go over here to B. And now we're gonna go from the radius to the diameter. So when you do that, you're supposed to multiply the radius by two. So two times three would give you the diameter of six inches. 
and then back over here to the other side for C, given the diameter of 16, if you want the radius, you're supposed to divide the diameter by 2. So that would be 16 divided by 2. So the radius would be 8 yards. And finally, problem D. If we wanted to go from radius to diameter, you would need to multiply 2 times the radius. So that would be 2 times 5.2. So the diameter would be 10.4. And we didn't get any units on that one, so we don't have to label it. Okay, radius and diameter. Moving on to the next page. This is page 615. Now we're going to talk about how we will be finding the circumference. The circumference of a circle is equal to pi times its diameter or pi times twice its radius. So there's actually two formulas that tell us how to find the circumference. One of them uses D for diameter and the other one uses R for radius. So we can use either one depending on the situation. If they tell us the diameter of the circle, then we can use the first formula. If they tell us the radius of the circle, then we can use the second formula. First formula is circumference equals pi times diameter. Second formula is circumference equals 2 times pi times radius. So we're going to go through some examples here of how to find the circumference. Now, before we do that, it is mentioned here in the book that even though we said that most of the time you use the number 3.14 to represent pi, it's also acceptable for you to use the fraction 22 over 7. But remember, both of these are approximate values of what pi really is. They are not exact. Pi is an irrational number that cannot be correctly written as a fraction or decimal. So we use values that are fairly close to do our calculations. All right, now why would we want to use 22 over 7? Let's talk about a problem where they do that here. Example 3. So one good reason to use 22 over 7 is sometimes it actually makes it easier to do the problem than you uh, would be able to do it if you use the decimal number. So let's check this out. To find the circumference of a circle with a radius of 21 inches, we would have to multiply 2 times pi times the radius. So if we are going to use 22 over 7 for pi in this problem, then that would be 2 times 22 over 7 times the radius, which is 21. Now, since 22 over 7 is a fraction, we will turn the 21 into a fraction by putting it over 1. And then we will do something called canceling. I don't know if you have seen this before, but in the fractions, 21 is on top and 7 is on bottom, and they have a common factor. They're both divisible by 7. So if you divide 7 by 7, then you can cross that out and put 1. And if you divide 21 by 7, you can cross that out and put 3. And you have just made your uh, problem a little easier because now you don't have to multiply by as large uh, numbers as before. So if we take 2 times 22 times 3, uh, we would get 132. And on bottom, if we take 1 times 1, that's 1. So 132 over 1 would simplify to 132 inches. 
So the circumference is about 132 inches. Now, down here at the bottom, it's time for you to practice. Um, I want you to use uh, 3.14 on problem E as your number for pi. And then I want you to use 22 over 7 on problem F. Stop the video and practice finding the circumference of the circle uh, by using the circumference formula, pi times diameter, for the first problem. And then over here, you're probably going to want to use 2 times pi times the radius because they gave you the radius. Okay, stop the video and work these two out, and then we'll go over them together. Okay, problem E. So if you replace pi with the number 3.14 and you replace the diameter with 70, because that's the diameter, and you multiply 3.14 times 70, then that's going to give you the circumference. So what is 3.14 times 70? 3.14 times 70, let me grab my calculator here. 3.14 times 70 is 219.8. And we label that inches. So that's 219.8 inches is the circumference. What is the circumference again? It's the distance around the outside of the circle. Let's move on to problem F now. So let's fill in this formula with the correct numbers. So we've got two times 3.14. Nope, we said we were gonna use 22 over seven on this one, didn't we? So let me back that up, 22 over seven. And then times the radius. Now the reason I told you to use 22 over seven is because your radius is also a fraction. So we get to do a little canceling out again in this problem. Since there's a seven on the top and a seven on the bottom, we're gonna divide by their greatest common factor, which is seven. Seven divided by seven is one. So we're gonna mark those out and put ones in their place. Then we're gonna look at the 22 and the eight. They do have a common factor. Both of them are divisible by two. 22 divided by two is 11, and eight divided by two is four. So let's see what we've got left to do here. I think we have a much easier problem. And we could even do one more cancellation here. If we put the 2 over 1, then we could cancel out the 2 and the 4 because 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So it looks like we have 1 times 11 times 1 for the numerators and we have 1 times 1 times 2 for the denominators. So that's 11 over 2. 11 over 2 is an improper fraction that means 5 and a half. So 5 and a half feet is the circumference of this circle. All right, we are ready to go on. Uh, there's an example here that shows you how to do a word problem about circumference. I don't think I'm going to go through that one right now. I'd like for you to answer the guided practice questions, one through five. We're not going to worry about number six right now. And then we'll go over those together. You can stop your video while you work uh, one through five, and then we'll go through these. All right. So in number one, we're taking the diameter and finding the radius. So to do that, you're supposed to divide the... the um, the diameter by two, radius equals diameter divided by two. 
So that would be 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. So 1.5 meters is the radius. All right, and problem 2, they gave you the radius, so you're supposed to multiply that times 2 to find the diameter. So 2 times 14 would be 28, so the diameter is 28 feet. And problem three, they gave you the diameter again, so you're supposed to divide the diameter by two to find the radius. So that would be 20 divided by two, which is 10, so the radius is 10 inches. All right, now we're going to practice finding circumference a couple of times. So here they gave us the diameter, and we're going to do pi times diameter to find the circumference. So that would be 3.14 times 15. And 3.14 times 15 is 47.1. And this is uh, meters. And we don't have to round it because it's already rounded to the nearest tenth, like the directions had said to do. All right, let's check out number five now. We're going to find the circumference. This time we want to use the 2 times pi times radius formula because they gave us the radius. So that would be 2 times 3.14 times 7 and 2 times 3.14 times 7 is 43 and 96 hundredths. And this needs to be rounded to the nearest tenth. So we are going to round it up to 44.0 because if you have to round the 9 tenths up, then you have to change the ones place. So 44.0 yards is the circumference for this circle. And that is the end of our guided practice. So your assignment will be to complete the problems on page 617. Show your work. You can use a calculator to help you do the work. Make sure to write your formulas to make it easier to follow the correct directions to get the answers. Um, you can skip number nine at the bottom, and you can also skip number, um, we'll skip number seven. So I want you to do one through six and eight as the assignment, and that will be for a grade. So that's the end of the lesson on circumference, and I'll be back with the next lesson uh, on finding the area of circles. See you then.